Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the three power tools that I could not be without when working with wood. But before I start, if you're new here, my name's Mary and I love to share some of the projects I have going on around here with you guys. So before I get started on talking about some of these power tools, um, I just want to share with you guys what I actually started out with when I began to develop you know, an interest in working with wood or building things. And this was at a pretty young age, of course. But I actually made some things with this tool here. I know it's almost from the caveman era, but um, I had so much fun with this. Even growing up, this was more almost like a toy to me. Um, I would go out in the woods and use it to, you know, cut uh, little logs and twigs and stuff, and I'd make little, uh, you know, bird houses, or I even once built a little house or a little shelter, uh, you know, with logs that I cut using the saw. Maybe not this exact one, although it almost looks like it could have been. So if you're not interested in using you know, power tools or don't have the money to buy them right now, there is always the handsaw. It, it works. It takes more time, but it works. And even with these three tools that I'll focus on today, there are some others that I have since started using that make a job easier. But for years, I just worked with these three tools. For example, the electric sander can of course be replaced with just sandpaper that you hold in your hand and sand. I used to do that a lot. This Milwaukee drill can always be replaced with a screwdriver. And then of course the skill saw here um, can be replaced with the hand saw. I'm just quickly going to go over you know what um, steps you can take to work with you know boards or you know just any piece of wood. In this case I have two pine boards here that I'll work with. So let's say you want to take a board and maybe build a small wooden box with it. I think that's what we'll do with these, just so I can show you guys. Um, the first thing, of course, you're thinking about is, you know, this box might be too deep. Like if this would be a side of a box, you actually want it to be more maybe about half or three-fourth of this width. Of course, a box this size would be nice too, but just to, you know, demonstrate, we'll do one that is, you know, has, um, not as wide sides. Now again, of course, I have what I call my rip table or a table saw where I can just easily in a couple seconds, I can run that through my saw and it will cut it to the size I need. But let's say I don't have the space for a table saw or the money to buy one. Um, you can always resort to a skill saw for that. And let me show you. So as you can see, I have two of these saws here. Uh, the one is cordless, and I really like that one, but right now the battery is not really good. I think it's, you know, giving out on me, so um, I'll just use the electric one. Uh, that way I know I can, you know, cut my whole piece of wood without, you know, running out of power. These are really handy to have around if you just have some quick cuts to make, especially. And the other nice thing about the skill saw is it comes with a uh, guide here that you can adjust how wide you want your board to be. And this one tightens with a screw. I have to get a screwdriver to tighten that up. Once I have it where I want it, I can tighten that up. So what I did here, which again, I rarely do this anymore since I use the rip table or the table saw, is I used clamps to hold my wood in place here. That way I can cut it, you know, the long way here without it sliding around too much. So what I want to do here is figure out how wide I want my board to be and then set, set my guide to that point. Um, it just kind of rides along the edge there. I will just eye it here. I will probably take off, you know, a couple inches of this board. So I want my guide to be, oh, about there. So I will go ahead and tighten the screws, hold that in place. And so now I'm ready to cut. So once you cut as far as you can go, as far as you know, your guide will come against your clamps or your table or whatever, um, you just stop and loosen the clamps. 
Now it would be a good idea to have a wooden table, guys. Uh, this table is plastic here, so I'm having some trouble that my clamps just want to, you know, it's not solid enough. So I am using this piece of iron here for some support. Um, but it, yeah, it works somewhat, but a wooden table would be better. But what you do is just flip your board around like this. And then clamp it again. So for the next step, uh, cutting my boards to size here, um, I would normally use my chop saw or miter saw, I think you can call them, um, to cut you know, the length I want. But in this case, I wanted to show you guys how you don't really need that. It's also a bigger saw, takes up more room, more expensive. So I'll just use the skill saw to do that. Again, using the clamps to hold my wood here. So this time I take off my guide. I set my pieces up like this, kind of in a box form. This board here will be the perfect width for my bottom here. So all I need to do is get a measurement from this point to this point and then cut my bottom for that. So here I have my five pieces, and the next step is, of course, putting them together. Um, I always pre-drill um, most of the wood that I you know, put screws into, because if you don't, it will split very likely. And it's always a good idea to use glue if you screw anything together. I don't always, I don't always follow all the rules, but in this case, I will. The nice thing about having two of these drills is, you know, the one you can have for your drill bit and then the other for your actual, you know, screw gun. And it's just nice so you don't have to switch um, all the time, but it's definitely doable with just one. I just want to talk a little bit about the Milwaukee brand of products, whether it's a drill or a saw or whatever it may be. Um, you basically get what you pay for. We love our Milwaukee tools and it's I know they're expensive but it's so worth it to have them. I know there's other brands out there that work just fine but uh, these are in you know for the long haul they will get the job done and they will last for years and years. We have had some other brands of tools and they don't last as long and I'm not getting paid to say this I it's just my opinion and I uh, I'm pretty sure uh, if you own any of these, you know what I'm talking about. So the next step here is sanding. And again, you could just grab a piece of sandpaper and do all the edges, but with the little mouse sander here, 
Um, this is, you know, a lot easier and faster. I love these mouse sanders since they have the pointed uh, shape here. It's just so much easier to get into small places and they're not really expensive. I go through a lot of them, but I use them a lot. So, you know, every couple years I need to purchase a new one. Okay, so now I have this cute little box here. I'll probably end up, you know, painting it and maybe uh, adding a word on the side or something. The cottage decal you see on the box is available on my Etsy shop and I will link that below in case you are looking for something simple to add to a home decoration. And as always, thank you so much guys for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe learned something from it. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of this type of video and I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!